Shaykh's teachings. They are the teachings of Prophet and they are from the realities of Holy Qur'an. And always talking from myself first that the ocean of ihtiba and the ocean of guidance is a reality fine like a hair that moving in the way of realities is the way of Prophet is the way of the Divine the Presence and only Allah try their best to keep their students always on the straight path meaning that no doubt they are on the Sirat al-Mustaqeem but constant reminder for themselves is that to follow the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and to inherit from the way of Sayyidina Muhammad is the ocean of ihtiba and to wajib al-takhleed is to follow and to follow a shaykh, follow a teacher is a lifelong process and they begin to teach us that to inherit from the way of Prophet and the highest of realities is to mimic that reality as Prophet was teaching his holy companions and their whole life was based on the struggle and accompanying the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the physicality of Prophet to inherit from the spirituality and the reality of Prophet Means it's an always a, a reminder for us in a time in which the mind has gone so wild and every entertainment and every computer and every reality is geared towards expanding the mind and closing the heart. And the way towards the Divine the Presence is closing the mind and expanding the heart. The seeker stands the risk of being lost in the world of imagination, which the mind is a fierce enemy against the believer. The mind has infinite capacity for imagination and can imagine everything. It can imagine a love affair, it can imagine a battle, it can imagine hatred. Everything can play out within somebody's mind. If they don't grasp the mind and take the way of the turuqs and the way of reality, first we explain on the danger of the mind and why the turuqs come to show us the inheritance of Prophet that they don't merely chant and do their practices and sit and go into the imaginal world of the mind because the mind has infinite capacity. It can make every scenario possible. It can imitate every, everything that you can imagine because you don't know the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So it can even present to you something that you think is Sayyidina Muhammad because shaitan cannot imitate Prophet but he may not be imitating Prophet but just showing you his imagination of that reality. Because you haven't seen the haqq and you haven't seen its reality. Shaitan can impersonate anything and show it to you as what he tells it to be. And so many people are lost in their minds and they have no mind, they're crazy. And they sit and they keep thinking in their mind, they laugh to themselves, they think to themselves. They're moving in the world of imaginal worlds in the mind and many evil spirits, many bad spirits may come to people and present themselves as good. They don't show themselves as bad. There's not one that comes and shows itself as a shayateen and says, I'm shaitan and come with me. But teaches that, oh I'm an angel and I'm coming from paradises. And I'm coming to guide you, I'm coming to inspire with you, I'm coming to teach you. All of that Prophet taught, leave it. Even you think it's right, leave it. It's not for you. That's not the way of the turuq, that the way of the turuq is to follow. It means to find the people of haqqaiq 
who live and breathe that reality, they live their sharia and they are living the way of tariqah, the way of the sharia and opening the sharia. Shariatullah, these are the laws of Allah and the laws of Prophet They live them the best that they can and their way, their tariq is to implement that reality by keeping a living guide and a living teacher, a living representative is the way of realities because everything they're going to teach is they're going to teach you shut off your head, stop your thinking process, stop your analyzing process. Everything that they're teaching you, you are taking it into your mind, battling it, chewing on it and then spitting it back out and you are approaching the Divine through the mind and this is the way of the heart. And the mind takes everything that the teachers are teaching and says, oh, I'll take a… it's like a dinner plate. I move away the broccoli and I keep the steak. Means I keep what I think is good for me and my ego and then I go back into my imaginal worlds and I think of myself as a big wali, a big awliya. I'm walking on water not remembering where you came from, what sins you have in your past, what have you done? How you think you can be something big? Means you're not honest with yourself, we're not honest with ourselves and the mind has overtaken us and it's very dangerous and that is a big sickness. And that's why we took the hands of the turuqs is that they teach us, shut your head off and try your best to live that way. So as soon as you accompany them, you listen to their teachings and you get agitated and they teach right from the teachings, this will be your kitab. So you're writing from marifa and that becomes the book in which will dress you. Then they begin when you accompany them in life, they begin to teach you, oh clean here, vacuum here, wash over there and your mind says, no you're a huge wali, you don't do anything like that. That you already have to know, then you're sick. When you think you are so big that you don't listen to them but you listen to your imagination when at home, there's a big sickness and that's why they exist to begin the training. That constantly bring yourself down, bring yourself down to be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing and real awliyaullah, if you meet a real wali who sees the seven heavens would never show themselves. And if you told them to scrub the toilet they would be the first in there to scrub. If you told them to wash the floor, they'd be the one first washing the floor. As much as you ridiculed them, they would stay quiet and maybe even cry. And that the rajats of why they would be crying, say, if I'm ridiculing you and you begin to cry, they have a darajat. One may be crying because he felt he's done something wrong and Allah has revealed his characteristic and he deserves what's coming to him. One may feel that I'm carrying the burdens of the people within the room, many different realities within the character and their akhlaq of perfection. Where now if you tell somebody one thing immediately explodes and shows the shaitan that he is, the devil that he is, the anger that he is, it's not wilayat and it's not sainthood. All of that is meant, this way is meant to show us our sickness. Not the, the, the room of imaginary people who live in their imaginary brains but the turuqs come to bring out the sickness. Then when you have no discipline upon yourself, you have no discipline upon your life and your being, if you don't discipline this physicality, how could you possibly think there's a reality coming out of your soul? The discipline is a way of cracking the body. When their discipline has been so much they'll be ordered by Prophet through their shaykhs that send that one into khalwa and let him spend 40 days with us because this is now an intimate relationship with Prophet Who's calling you for the khalwa? Is Allah 
through Sayyidina Muhammad because it's a completion of Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. Means the Ulul Amr are in charge of testing us, moving us left and right, left and right. See, are you moving left when they say left or you go right? And when they say right, you say left. And when they say forward, you go back. And when they say back, you go forward. They say, that one not from us and not ready for what Prophet wants. Their way is completely to be disintegrated, to be smashed and to be crushed. If we are not achieving that, then we're playing with jinn. We're playing with spiritual beings that are coming and occupying our mind and mischievously doing things. Or worse, you're completely lost in an insane mind. Big danger. And this is the world we live in now and this is what the computer emphasizes. For everybody just to sit by themselves and go into the imaginal world. The computer is the imaginal world and people play hours with it and then they live like that too. Because this is the sickness of this time, is the imagination and the brain where they're teaching us, no, 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 this way, you want this way because they only have a few times to test you. Other than that you get thrown out, they catch you in the grave. They're not interested in collecting garbage. What Prophet wants is to collect the jewels. Means they test that left is left, right, right. Break down your ego, break down your bad characteristic. Don't talk to us about your dreams and your imaginations. Because guidance and real guidance is through the physicality. Because many people want to come and tell you all their dreams and what's the danger of that? Break common sense. If someone sits with you and begins to tell you through their dreams, what is the ego doing and accomplishing? Because everything is very easy to, to balance it. If the purpose was to be nothing and the ego to be smashed and the reality of the soul to come out, why sit with somebody and begin to tell them all your dreams and lofty experiences? Is that for your soul or for your ego? For the ego. The ego wants to quickly identify, before you talk to me, let me tell you my rank, let me tell you all my experiences. So shaykh immediately knows this is now a big ego because it wants to clarify that don't talk to me at this level, let me tell you where my level is and I begin to we'll address each other like that. So these are all from the ego, it's very simple science. When they give permission for guidance they've been through all of these traps. And as a result the light that opens within them and their soul, it has all sorts of technologies attached to their lights. Means when they accomplish the fight against themselves and they've been ordered by Prophet into seclusion, that seclusion they've been given many different equipments for analysis. Like today's doctors when they use CTs and MRIs, all of these advanced technologies that Allah is the owner of these realities. When they give permission of guidance means that their reality has opened and they have many different technologies. And everybody that they're dealing with, they're understanding with all of these technologies what's happening. But for us to understand the way they're teaching and reminding, don't come through your head. Don't trust any vision that you think you are having. Don't talk to us about dreams, we don't believe in any of them. The dream if you think it was something good is for yourself. You don't use it in, in guidance. If you think it was something good and it increased you in ibadat, it increased you in worshipness, alhamdulillah it's something for you private. Means if you see a vision of whatever you have to do or whatever station you have that should be increasing you in your salah. That night you go pray hundred rakahs 
and make 50 more rakal every day and that is the benefit of that dream. But not to think the dream is showing you a maqam and a station that you have achieved, then you must know immediately you're under your ego. And that's why awliyaullah they don't, they don't rely on anything like that. And whatever they want to be shown from the heavens, they're trained, negate it, take it, thank you very much and throw it out the window. I'm not in need of that vision. I'm not in need to be shown I've been given this, I've been given that, I've been dressed by this, dressed by that. All of that is for my ego's entertainment and I'm still a filthy person. What's the benefit of that? That is the battle of the self. Prophet describing we came from the small jihad to the bigger jihad. Sahabi like are astonished. We were fighting two times a day. Ya Rasulullah, what are you talking about? Petrified, how could there be a greater fight? He says, the fight against yourself. Anybody meditate on what that means? <clears throat> to fight against yourself is don't trust anything that coming to your head and take everything and take the door of hardship. If you see something going to bother you and agitate you, move into that door. Be agitated and be aggravated. And through sabr and patience Allah rewards you. That's why Allah surrounds him by crazy people. When Allah loves somebody, He surrounds them by crazy people. But don't think the character of the shaykh is stupid, that he doesn't know who's crazy. He knows exactly what's happening and he has many different abilities or many different technologies to give them information. But because they took a way of patience, they put themselves through hardship to develop patience, sabr, sabr. That Allah grant them sabr, grant them sabr, to be nothing, to be nothing. It's not the way to think that you're something but this is the way to scrub the floors, to clean, to humiliate yourself. And when shaykh sends somebody to talk to you, it's a matter of effacing and, and bringing down the self. And you think to yourself, Samina wa tana, there should be no bad characteristic to come out. And as much as that bad characteristic comes out, it's for us to understand you are not that one you think you are. The, Bring yourself back down and know you're still in the kindergarten level. The kindergarten level means continue struggling against yourself. Follow the physical advice of the teacher. Ask physically what am I supposed to be doing and follow only that. That is the highest form of guidance. Imam al-Rabbani from our shaykhs said, we are not the people who follow dreams. But we follow real time. Means we don't rely on the dream because the dream state is that your ego was so big it had to go to sleep for guidance to come to you. Because you were not going to listen to that guidance until they gave you anesthesia. So they give you the, the medicine, get that body out of the way. As soon as you sleep, oh, now we can guide. It's the lowest form. Highest is to receive guidance real time. Means when you accomplish the guidance of following the shaykh, physically following for years under all of their testing and all of their conditions, at that time when they sign off on your ijazah and send you for seclusion and Prophet signed on your ijazah, means now we're going to open from our ruhaniyat because your physicality is under submission. If that has not occurred, then that ruhaniyat means nothing, throw it into the garbage. It's all shaitaniyat, it's all bad ego and fuzzy connections and jinn and every type of influence that making the person to be confused. Why they want you to be confused is because they don't want you to be listening to the living guide. If you really understood the reality of the living guide, the living guide represents his shaykh 
The living guide represents the light of Sayyidina Muhammad that's enough for you. Why to, to listen to your imagination and what you think you may be dreaming? When all of that can be all sorts of imaginary worlds. That's why, that's why Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri Minkum. That the Ulul Am, they follow the Sharia of Allah When they follow the Sharia of Allah it's enough for you to accompany them. If you accompany them, you see that you'll be completely dressed in fiqr. You'll be completely dressed by the madhab that they are following. You'll be completely dressed on the qadam and the feet of Prophet and the feet of the Siddiq. When your form is following exact, your character is following exact, you find that you've been disciplined in such a way that you are so humble and that your characteristics outshine other people's characteristics. When you go places, people are amazed that what kind of teaching do you have? When we're going all these places, it's not from them. These are Naqshbandi teachings. They may be 30 years didn't do anything. What you're seeing is the light of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah. When they see all that food being prepared, how? This is from the discipline of the students. When they see people are preparing the food and serving the food and cleaning the food and men coming out and serving it and picking up and cleaning, this is all the discipline of tariqah. And other people are, are astonished by that discipline. And the bad characteristic ones, they don't do anything. They think they're so high. And that again is a sign of the sickness of their bad characteristics. But others who are watching and observing, they're astonished at this reality. We go many masjids and we don't see anybody doing like this. These are the turuqs. You're not just, just teaching people sit down and imagine in your brain all sorts of crazy imaginations, but real life discipline. Left, right, left, right. Pick up, clean up, scrub, do all these things because this brings bad characteristics down. If the bad characteristic comes down and the mouth doesn't open. That's why they said when the training going to be fierce, put a rock in your mouth. Because everything your mouth puts out will lost your darajat, lost your station and we have to start again. Better to put a rock in your mouth so that when you're getting angry, let the fire of your bad character be extinguished by that rock. As Allah described the rock, eh, it has benefit because even water comes from the rock. When Nabi Musa hit the rock and 12 springs of reality came out, means it has the ability to extinguish that fire and discipline our characteristic that I must bring myself down, I must bring my talking down, I must bring what I think of myself down, be humbled and humiliated and then have sabr and patience. With that sabr and patience they can rebuild that reality. That is the character of tariqah. Because if we don't describe that, many new people begin to come and think, oh this is the way of the imaginal world. I'm doing this and I'm that, I'm this and I'm that and have no discipline whatsoever. If you don't discipline the physicality, the power that you think you have is not from your soul. If it's not from your soul then these are from the jinn and the shayateen and we want no part in that and we don't care for that. Subhanahu rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun wa mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.